Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is the Ramble, and I'm Alex, and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, sitting there, when's the last time I saw you, Lori Thompson? It was when I came to visit you and your lovely spouse um, and brought my fiancé yeah. to New York. And yeah. That would have been at least a year ago. Okay. I think more like two. Yeah, yeah. Now, it, we, and we have kept in touch over the years. But this is a woman that I woke up with every morning. <laughs> well, almost, it's true. almost woke up with. I actually got in the car and and wasn't was hardly awake by the time I got to the studio. <laughs> and we did a morning we did a morning show for we estimate over a period of about ten years, maybe. Yeah, I think if yeah. you added it up, there was a, like I say, their contract negotiation. It wasn't a for... contract negotiation. They actually fired me. Well, they did. And, I, and, and I, I, went, I went to Florida, which I will never forgive them for, okay? <laughs> I claim no responsibility. Wait a minute, wait a minute. you're living there. in Florida now, aren't you? Right, but oh, we God, live I've... in the panhandle. Oh, okay. Away from madness. Otherwise, I would, I would feel very sorry for you. Um <laughs> But and then they begged me. They didn't beg me. We begged each other for me to come back. So yes, yeah, because they had hired a shock jock, mm -hmm. thinking that would and a, it was a modern rock format. And I loved our general manager, by the way. Yeah. But um, it was it was just such a non fit. You know, he was into he he was of a different mentality well, not, than our demographic. But Ed Kramp was still the general manager when I left, wasn't he? I think so. Yeah. yeah. And then when I came back, there was a different general manager, and he said he just wanted to put the team back together again. That was his whole yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 So. I was, it was miserable when you were gone. Well, I, it like was I miserable for me while I was gone. I was in Florida. <laughs> I, I was in Miami. That's the meanest city in America. Yeah, because whenever we uh, travel through there, um, I go, Alec, I look for billboards and try to remember what station. I knew a guy named Neil Rogers was on your station. Yeah, he died a couple of years ago. You saved him from a stroke, didn't you? Well, no, I mean, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Uh, I, um, uh, 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 Neil Rogers was the most popular talk show host in, in Miami, okay? Just, he was gigantic, okay? And so I come into this station with this gigantic host, Okay. And um, one morning he comes in and he says, I don't know what happened to me last night. He said, but I was up all night and I just, did, and he described all these things that were happening. And I said, I would immediately go to a doctor. I think you had a, you had a heart attack. And uh, he went to his doctor and I was right. He had a heart attack. <laughs> right? See, so, you saved his so life. I saved his life. Only to have him live long enough to make my life a living hell at that radio station. I remember that. I remember to that. To where I finally, not... yeah, he just he just made my life miserable. But I saved his life. I know. You, you think know? that that would be ever present in his mind. Yeah. Well, later on, but... many years later, he, he died. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. another heart attack or something. But <laughs> And when everybody went, did you hear Niels Rogers is dead? I said, it's about time. You know, he was the meanest. Stucco coming off the ceiling. He was, he was the biggest asshole I've ever worked with in my life. Yeah, I I try to get along with people very very, um, what it urgently. I'll yeah. try to work with people, but there are some people who just take a dislike, I think, or a threat. Maybe he was threatened by. Me. Yeah. And uh, they they take that initial. What can you be threatened by me? He was the top morning, top talk show host in Miami. But you were a hot shot. You'd done New York. You'd been a big wheel in San Francisco. Well, yeah, but, I, but I didn't walk in pretending like I suddenly was cock of the walk or anything. I walked in very humbly. It was very nice to him all the time. Always uh -huh. said, Neil this and Neil that. And hey, hi, how are you? <laughs> and all of that. And one day he's put me down on the air. He's just See, that's, going that's after hard. me, making my life a living hell. 
Yeah, I don't know. I think it has something to do with that person. You know, when someone has an attitude against you and you barely even have, you know, had any It's like two experience. women showing up at the same party wearing the same dress. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. uncomfortable no matter how you slice. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So anyway, I, so I woke up with this woman. She was, it, it, we had such a close relationship that everybody thought we had a relationship going ourselves. Remember that? The, oh, which which one? Give me a hint. No, no, but, this? no. I'm saying. Oh, me. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah. They thought that we yeah. were having some kind of relationship. Uh -huh. You know, which I would never, ever in a million years think of. Only not because you aren't attractive. And, and not because you wouldn't be my type or anything like that, but because you worked with me and I valued exactly. that more than any kind of carnal needs that I might have. Right, exactly. Right? That is one of my uh, strong commitments. I don't mess with people I work with or married guys. Yeah, you yeah. Do, yeah but you just don't. You, 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 yeah. you, it's just it, because at some point you're going to break up. And when you yeah. break up... Uh. It's like George and Tammy. And you know? I, I, va I valued our relationship as uh, two people on the air more yeah. than, than anything else, you know. Well, there was an intimacy there that defied, you know, uh, romance. I mean, or it was a kind of, you know, it was, it had elements of a romance, but it was based on on air intimacy. We, we, we had an intimate relationship, but on the air, everybody heard it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, we just had. Fun. I mean, you, you know, I always people say, "Well, did you ever, did you ever sleep with her?" And I said, "Yes, once." You, we, you, where you, was it? Spain. And, uh, in Spain. Yes, yes. Because guess where we're going in August? Spain. Ibiza. Ibiza. I'm never going to go back there again. Have you seen it oh, lately? No. Oh, it's just it's like this tourist trap. It's just, oh, man. it's really changed. That, it's really changed. Yeah. That's what I loved about it. It was still kind of rustic. No, when we went there, it was still rustic. I could still, yeah. still take you to a beach and it was almost empty, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, but anyway, and so, so she and I, uh, we, 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 we decided what the hell we got to, we got a room together. Yeah. And we go in, it's a single bed and we went, what the hell? You know, <laughs> and, and we spent spent the night sleeping together, you know, yeah, a, a couple funny. of nights, actually. And we, yeah. you know, we didn't touch each other or anything else, you know. Yeah, well, it's kind of like when you go to a nude beach with yeah. someone you know and yeah. have known since childhood. Yeah. Like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you hiked up opposite yeah. ends of the beach. Yeah, but I mean, the point yeah. was that you, uh, you know, I mean, we just had this wonderful relationship where we could do something like that, and it didn't, it, it, it didn't even occur to us to have sex or anything. Uh, didn't no, we, we did a video though in which we pretended to. Yeah, we that was a fun video you did on a beef that yeah. night. I don't I know where that, that is now, but we were, yeah. we were just in bed and I go, Lori, you know, and it was just like, we were going, oh, well, we never do something like that. And the next thing we know, we're just all over each other. You know? <laughs> yeah. I loved it that you always did videos whenever we traveled. Yeah. You know, for, and cause we usually stayed, we often stayed a little after like a couple of weeks after a couple of weeks before, and you always made really great videos. Well, I was, always, yeah. I always took video constantly. You know, I've done videos yeah. of all my vacations, you know, yeah, and Wendy O. Williams said you were the first guy that she knew that had a VCR. So yes. you were always... Yeah. Well, because what when Wendy O. Williams, the plasmatics, now dead because she committed suicide, it had nothing to do with me, by the way, folks. <laughs> uh, she um, um, uh, she uh, and uh, Rod Swenson, her boyfriend manager, uh, longtime... Uh, the person she... Her boyfriend for years. I don't think they ever got married. Uh, uh, they came over, and I had a bootleg copy of Star Wars, which in those days was bootleg. And I showed them Star, Star Wars, and she remembered that, you know, as being, mm -hmm. because she had never yeah. seen a video recorder before. Yeah, and I was I was blown away when she took her life because she you never got that vibe from her. I, I adored her. I just yeah. adored her. She was a sweet, kind, very quiet person. 
mm-hmm. until she got on stage with a you know a, a <laughs> ch- chainsaw and to- took tore apart a car and then blew it up. You know? Yeah, then there was a transition. Yeah, in fact, I think they did it. They did that on the uh, on the Letterman show on the Late Show when he was over at NBC. They actually blew up a car in the studio and didn't tell them they were going to blow it up. Whoa! Yeah. Shrapnel everywhere, even yeah. in the cheap seats. But anyway, anyway, yeah, she she was a lovely person. I, I uh, when she died, I felt. I, in fact, I spoke at her memorial. You, you know, did? Yeah, yeah. I, I, yes. I was was I was it I was in New York or I flew into New York to do the memorial. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's but uh, yeah, we had so many. I mean, people that would stop by whenever they were in town. Yeah. And that's what was fun about the show. I mean, people, every time I turn the television on, I see someone who was on the show. Yeah. You know, that were, yeah. Do you know, who, just, you know who died today? This is when we're recording. Uh, don't tell this. me. Not Harry B- Belafonte. That no, was no, earlier no, this week. No, no. That was who? Jerry Springer. Re- oh, Springer, because he made a comment about my boobs. Did he make yeah. a comment about your boobs? What did he say? Yeah, but it was off, it was off the air because... Uh, I was, I don't know, I think I just had them done, and I was like, sporting them, yeah. and he said, did someone turn the air condition on and look down? Because apparently I had gotten perky as we stood there for a photo. Oh, I see, okay. And yeah. this was a thing we did at my house, I believe, or I don't know, that may have been another occasion, but we were doing the, one of my bedroom shows that I would do, we'd do a show live from my bedroom. Yeah, and... and, and- yeah, we had there were so many, so many morning live shows. That, yeah, yeah, that but we but we did this thing in my bedroom, and he uh-huh. did the show from my bedroom, and uh, yeah, and I I, I always liked uh, uh, Jerry. Whenever I did an interview with him, I liked him a lot. Yeah, yeah, completely unpretentious, not condescending. Yeah. He wasn't full of himself. He's very at smart, all. very political, by the way. Very political mm-hmm. guy. Uh, yeah, well, he was mayor of was it mayor of Cleveland? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. For like two years, and then he had to quit or something on some kind of scandal. Or, yeah, I think he wrote a check to a, yeah. a prostitute. But and that was that. That was it. Yes, that was yeah. That was the bust. I said. Yeah. The, the, I I think I said something. Didn't you learn the lesson to pay cash? You know. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> come on, Jer. Grow yeah. up. Yeah, you don't write but, a check. Uh, now you're going to have a chance to uh, meet our gov. We might have a chance to meet our governor. Florida governor up close and personal, Ron DeSantis. Why? Who's he's going to run for president? It's very clear, but uh, he's he's a mixed review here in Florida, and so uh, you know, and I've only lived here a year and a half. So, uh, but you've lived there a year will, and a half, and the big penalty is to have to meet Ron DeSantis. No, that's it. You know, you, you have to, it's something they invoke on you as you cross the state line. Yeah. Eventually oh you're going to have God. to do it. I'm, no, but I meant nationally. He's going to be, uh, he's going to. I don't know. I, want, I don't know if huh? he's going to, I don't know if he's going to run. I think there's too much stuff against him now. You know, there's, I think he's got a skeleton that we well, don't know big, about yet. The big thing is his suit by Disney. Disney's suing I know. him. It is, I mean, in poetic terms, a pissing contest because they do something that ticks him off. He does something that ticks them off. Yeah. And it's just, it's kind of juvenile. They tick each other off, yeah. Yeah. yeah so how are, you, then, why, how are you going to meet him? Why are you going to meet him? No, just because, well, for um, I always wanted to cover a presidential election mm-hmm. from, like, the announcement mm-hmm. um, and the, the horse race mm-hmm. uh, to the presidency. And I had a chance to do that in Des Moines. I thought, where does it all happen? It happens first in Iowa. And so I got to uh, go to the last Harkin steak fry, which was a blast. That was always on the... I I remember that because I went to to Iowa. I go once or twice to the the, uh, uh, caucus and covered Uh the caucus for the radio show and did the show from Iowa. Yeah, that's where it all starts. And I think there was a steak fry thing. Oh, it yeah. isn't it? What and that one? This one that I went to was iconically beautiful. It was in the, it's in this big meadow, and the speakers, the keynote speakers, were Hillary and Bill Clinton. And Bill Clinton, what a schemer! He was wearing a blue check shirt, and he looked pretty good at the time. And so uh, he was scheming every single woman in the place. 
I mean, he just had well, that. Here's anger. what they said about him that, that I found always interesting was he tried to seduce anybody that was in his presence, whether male, was, or, fe male or female. Yeah. And they tr I read an interesting article, I think Vanity Fair, but maybe, maybe elsewhere, that because of his mother, who was a party girl, you know, yeah. and so it explained that I think she was a single woman for much of the time, much of his youth, and how she was very social. And so it kind of rubbed off on him, and he saw how to charm. And so that stayed with him. Yeah, well, I and, mean, he, he, he I, anybody I know who's met him said that he just tries to seduce anybody in his presence. Now, when I say seduce, I don't mean sex. I mean seduce, you know, yeah. and that he was very good at it. Very. You know, people yeah. who Maybe hated him. Like people who hated him liked him in his presence. Yeah. You know, I mean, because he was, he made you feel like you were the most important person in the world. Yeah. And then he would move on yeah. to the next most important person in the world. But that was just such a fun day. It's just, it's like out of a Terrence Malick movie. It yeah. was that beautiful. And uh, so, and I had a gig where I had my own interview studio and I could, it was a right leaning station, mm -hmm. but I could essentially cover anything I wanted. And I could do an interview with anyone I wanted. So I could decide, you know, I'm going to, Carly Fiorina was right. running at the time. And I decide I'm going to interview Carly Fiorina today and call her up and find, you taught me so much about radio in general, but interviews. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I eventually made a breakthrough when I was talking about her being a mother. And it was, you know, the unusual things, if you'll just let yourself think you know, outside their perimeters, you can get some really good conversations going with people like. Well, you know, what, what, what happens when you're interviewing is you feel particularly good when you suddenly realize that you've just asked the best question you've ever asked anybody. Because yeah. do you remember when you interviewed Louis Farrakhan? Well, that I remember that as the best question I ever asked in an interview. You ask him? Did you ask him if I recall uh, what makes you laugh? Yeah. Tell me something that made you laugh recently. Yes. And he told the story of his grandchildren at a party with some peppers. That's right. Yeah. That's that right. Was, and I he started that and he started laughing as yes. he told the story. And everybody yeah. in the studio went, this isn't the Louis Farrakhan we've gotten to know. No, yeah. but this is the Louis Farrakhan who exists. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why I considered it the most important question I ever asked in an interview. Because that was amazing. Got an amazing it, re response from him. You know. Yeah, you yeah. could you could just see it happening. You know, you could see yeah. it, him kind of melting through those defenses. So so you know, um, uh, we have actually traveled the world together. I mean, we were in uh, yeah. Alberville. For, we went to all the Olympics. Yeah. Let me let me bring up a story here. This is the one that okay. scared the living daylights out of me. Do you remember the day I was arrested by the Coca-Cola police? I do. Yes, I do. Because it okay. was. Hey, let's let's were... explain. Let's set this thing okay. up. I think we're going to go to two interviews today on this. <laughs> we're, but what we're just that sparkly. Was, <laughs> what happened was we went to the Olympics in Alberville and we flew there and it's courtesy of Coca-Cola. No, this was, uh, if if I could just, uh, it was Lillehammer, Ben, because well, it was cold. Oh, it's, that oh. was in Alberville. You're right, Lillehammer. Gee, I'm, I'm, my mind, I'm sorry. It's, it's all right. I'm, it's I'm, I'm 83 years old and an old man. <laughs> what do you expect of me? What do you expect of me? <laughs> anyway, I, we were in Lillehammer, and uh, we went there. And when we first got to the airport, our bags were the last bags to get off the plane. And it turned out that they thought we were like drug dealers or something. So they yeah. take me and they take me into another room and they strip search me. Yeah. And fine. I I, listen, I'm just here to do a damn radio show, you know, from yeah. the Olympics. I, I didn't know if it was full cavity, but I knew the strip search. But, but after that, I was not in a good mood. And now, no. now we're traveling to Lillehammer and... Um, I guess it was that night you and I were, there was this woman who was there. Uh, yeah. You, they had for, us all room with people and they had you room with this woman. I don't remember who she was. Yeah, there, there were three of us in, in an apartment. In an apartment, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't know her real well. Yeah. No. But I. But anyway, uh, I went in there, and she was like really nasty or mean, or she did some kind of stuff. She was just kind of egging me on. Do you remember that? She was she like, she was. She was definitely yeah. egging you on. And I'm thinking, why is she doing this? She doesn't even know me, you know. She, and I, we found out later she was a little nuts. But anyway, <laughs> what happened was I left the um, uh, I left the room. I was just sick of it, and I was mad at Lori because I felt Lori should have intervened and stopped her, and you know. Well, I try. I was in. The, I was still getting dressed. I was still yeah, getting ready. Yeah. I were going out. To so dinner. anyway, so you came out into the hallway, and I started yelling at you. Right? And was it, it at me or at her? No, yeah, no, I at you. Remember. At you. She wasn't yeah. out there. Okay. Yeah. So at one point, uh, I am in, in yelling at you. I <laughs> slap my hands like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or on the door okay. or something. Okay, and then yeah. you and I are calming down, and finally, as always, you know, we're friends. We don't l let these things last, you know, and I was just right. in a horrible mood from this getting arrested at the airport and all that. Plus, you'd just broken up with your long time. Oh, uh, oh I, I, yeah, you, yeah. you, yeah, boy, you remember everything. You're... <laughs> just wait till you be, just wait till you get to be my age, you'll forget it all. Anyway... <laughs> So uh, 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 we uh, went to, uh, where was it? Uh, so anyway, so that was it, right? Mm -hmm. The next morning I come into the Coca-Cola studios and they say, well, you come downstairs with us and they take me into the basement. Right, and, waterboarded. <laughs> and they said, we're keeping you here. It's like, this is the security people from Coca-Cola. And they said, uh, we hear last night that you hit Lori Thompson. <laughs> it was I like, said, huh? what? You know, I don't think I've ever hit a woman in my life. Right. And then I did intervene. I said, well, no. Wait minute, well, wait a minute, hold on a second. So they said, uh, well, you know, we're thinking of sending you back to California because we heard about you hit Lori Thompson. I said, well, go ask Lori. She said, well, she hasn't come in yet. I said, well, ask yeah. her. And when she came, when you came in, they said, "Did Alex hit you last night?" And you said, "No." What? What? No. <laughs> no. So now they come down. They start profusely apologizing to me. Yeah. But in the meantime, I'm completely terrorized. Right? Yeah, you were. Uh, um, because I don't know level. about you folks, but you've never been arrested till you've been arrested by the Coca-Cola police. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They're tough. Yeah, and, and, and I but just, that, you know, and I went, this is amazing because the last thing I would ever do uh, and anybody could ever accuse me of was, was having any kind of violent act against not only any woman, but Lori, especially. Yeah, yeah. You know. And... And I tried, you know, I, I did everything I could to convince them that that was totally awful. And this woman had ratted on me. She yeah. And she was able to give them her very um, dramatic or... Yeah, um, and, and yeah. when they found this all out, they sent her back home. Oh, did they? I they didn't told, remember that. Asked, they asked her to leave, yeah. Yeah, because that was, I mean, that's an act, quite an accusation to make well, against Well, I mean, somebody. yeah, it's very terrifying. It's very yeah. terrifying, and you know what it is, especially, and I hate to say this, if you're a guy, you've got to prove you didn't. You right. Know, that, it, it, the, the onus is on you because you were accused by some woman, and, and all of a sudden you're there trying to explain yourself out of this thing. And, of course, anytime you try to explain yourself out of something like this, it sounds like you're guilty. Yeah, right? yeah. And uh, then, you know, and women I know are often uh, taken to task because they'll wait but uh there is a very strong fear of not being believed well I think. that 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 has existed for a long time too but it's mm -hmm. to the detriment of guys who are innocent who didn't do anything yeah you know i think it goes it flows both ways yeah because oh the, you know who else died the woman that accused uh, uh the fellow that was lynched in mississippi the one that uh, she accused him and led to his lynching. What was? Oh, um, oh, oh, yeah, a, a kid, a kid who, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, she, yeah. She, 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 before her death, I think, said that it never happened. Yeah, she yeah. recanted. Yeah, yeah. Um, Emmett Till. Emmett Till is who you. That's it. 
Yeah, yeah. I get him confused with Medgar Evers, but different, whole different situation. Hey, listen, and, we're, we're running out of time here for this segment. Can you stick around and maybe we'll do another one, which will be on next week? Can sure, you got some sure enough, I'm having a blast. There's so much t- things we got to talk about here and so I, on and yeah. so forth. Current, past, Ladies in the and future. gentlemen, we're getting the team back together again because uh, well, I'll, <laughs> I'll explain it next time. Ladies and gentlemen, her name is Lori Thompson. Thank you, Lori. My pleasure. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Isn't that wonderful, huh? Huh? Laurie Thompson and Alex Bennett together again for the first time in years. I mean, we've, we've seen each other several times in the last couple of years. And I think the last time she was on the air with me was we were in San Francisco for me to get my, uh, uh, what do you call it, my uh, uh, Hall of Fame induction in the San Francisco Radio Hall of Fame. Uh, and uh, she was, uh, we, we, we had her on the show uh, when we did our radio shows from there while we were waiting to get our award, right? Okay. So anyway, uh, and we'll have her back on, I guess, next week probably. Uh, we did two interviews today, and it was just, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. I love that woman. She's just, she's been a very important part of my life, okay? One of the important women in my life, all right? Um. But anyway, I think it's time that we uh, admit some people. And uh, you know, the, uh, on Thursdays, I don't even know why I do a show on Thursdays. We get so few people calling, but we have three people waiting right now. So we'll admit them. And uh, I will, uh, oh, there they are. They're coming up. There's Je- Jeff, and there's uh, Charlie, and there's Kevin. And Jeff, would you show? Yeah, there you go. Let's see more of your face. There, that's cool. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm happy. That was a wonderful interview. <laughs> well, there's another one that we're playing next week. So, you it was know. good to see Lori again. Yeah, it was, it's wonderful to see Lori. It's always wonderful to see Lori. Uh, we have, and we have so many other tales to tell. And between she and Chuck Farnham, I'm beginning to remember what happened in my life. You know. I found this you knocking it out of the park this week. Huh? What? You're knocking it out of the park between Chuck and Lori this week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and uh, I see Lisa Carr is in the chat. So is I she, saw her. Is she in the chat tonight? Oh. Yeah. You know, Lisa, we should get a hold of you and have you on too. Absolutely. You know, she was our traffic woman before Bubbles. Well, yeah. became the traffic woman. Oh, became the traffic woman. I, I used to depend on her when I was driving truck because that was about the time I was pulling out of the the warehouse. Yeah, well, she was really good at it. Uh, um, on the other hand, Bubbles just did it for grins. Yeah. You know. Just looking for hookers. <laughs> yeah, right. All the stuff so, we can't. Market Street. Yeah, all, 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 the, all the jokes we couldn't pull today on radio. But, right. Uh, Anyway, so that was really it was it was wonderful. I'm glad you enjoyed it. These are people who know her because they listen to her. Uh, uh, Charlie, how do you know her? Because did you listen? I don't to- know. This first time I ever saw her, heard her, whatever. She's just the chemistry between you two is just amazing. Yeah, I, what I was amazed with the interview was the chemistry hasn't l- gone away at all. Not it, at all. It's still there, you know. Yeah. After all just these like years. Just like on the radio again. Yeah, and Jeff doesn't know who the hell we're talking about. I'm jealous. Thank you. I know out on all of that. Huh? As I'm I jealous. Remember, I missed I out in, on all of this San Francisco Miami. stuff. You were in Miami. Yeah, but I was in Florida. Yeah, and I listened you, to you on Miami. Yeah, but she wasn't with me in Miami. She wasn't there. No. Oh no. No, this is San Francisco. Okay. It's all San Francisco. So, you know. But I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad, well, Kevin, I'm glad you enjoyed it because you know who she is. And I'm saying to Charlie, glad you enjoyed it and you didn't know who she was. So, you know, that's cool. That's very cool. Uh, here comes, uh, here comes Alan. Uh, he probably didn't even listen to it. He probably didn't even listen to it. Uh, you know. Hello, Alan. Hello, Alex. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah. Yeah. See, he didn't hear it. Nope, he didn't you missed to it. it. I'll go back and play it later. <clears throat> what was the question? 
No, it's not a question. It was the interview with Lori Thompson. You missed it. Oh, well, I missed it because I was busy, but I'll, if it's going to be put out there, which I'm sure it will be, I can listen to it later. No, I've decided to not post it anywhere. <laughs> Kiss my ass. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Damien. Well, it says Damien Chaplin. Shall I trust this? Let me <laughs> let me put my finger on my camera here. Hold on a second. Uh, let's see here. Hello. Wait a minute. Is that Damien? Damien, is that you? Yeah, yes, oh, it yes. is. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. No, the right. must be right. Not somebody. Right. Not let somebody. me turn my mic up. Yes, it's me. Oh, oh, no, turn, <laughs> turn your mic down. Your mic is way loud. Okay, here we go. Little, How's that? A little more. A little more. All right. A little more. Check, check. Check, okay. check. Check, just a little more. Even a little more. Gosh, wow. I'm down at like uh, negative 10 now. Oh, okay. You're, fi you're fine now. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe keep your mic a little I, bit away from you. Yeah, what were you going to say, Damien? I, I only have a couple minutes, but I did just hear that interview, and having not heard Lori Thompson and you in – decades <laughs> um yeah um I, that was delightful just just really delightful um and i honestly I, I wish it were live so i could have called in and told her you know um uh, between like the years of 1991 and 1993 i woke up at 6 a.m every morning to hear you guys yell at each other <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then I would like wake up at, I would, I, it would be like 6.15 in the morning and I'd have the radio on and yeah. I'd still be sleeping, but you guys would be yelling at each other and I would wake up and I'd be like, I would yell at the radio, shut up, you two, God, <laughs> <laughs> it's 6.15 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a, we had a, we had a good time. We had a really good time. You know, it was, uh, it was terrific. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you all enjoyed it. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let me see here. What else? Uh, so that that's uh, that's good. That's good. I'm glad that you enjoyed that, uh, and that you. Uh, uh, I'm I'm having a little trouble here with my, uh, with my. Um, oh, okay, I'll worry about it later. And my my Wi-Fi is all screwed, so <laughs> it does this every day. So I can't turn off my lights now if I wanted to. So, I give up. I give up I, on this. Well, get into my wife. I, it's yeah. up but anyway, thank you, Damien. I appreciate it. You have a cold, don't you? No, no, I oh, don't. Oh, it sounded like you did. No, no. It's, I'm just nasally. That's all. You're nasally? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just a normally nasally person. Normally nasally, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, but I, I uh, um, you know, it, it's nice to know that you people feel that we haven't missed a beat in all those years, you know? Yeah, no kidding. It, it, yeah. Um, I, I, I saw your Facebook post, and that's why I was like, oh, I got to tune in. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah it, like I said, delightful yeah. um, to hear her again yeah. and to hear you guys. Um, now, it, it, next week, are you going to, guys, are you guys going to argue? <laughs> no, we actually don't argue on this at all. Yeah. yeah, could you could you do a third interview where you guys just argue? No, but you see the problem <laughs> so just nope. just for old time's sake. <laughs> if 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 I start arguing with her, then Marjorie is going to complain that she's stealing her act. So okay. you know, so uh, but I don't. Did we argue that much in the morning? I, well, only only playfully, basically, you know, um, hmm. and especially when. Well, I mean, you 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 had some rough times uh, in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and um, there were times when you were just generally cranky, <laughs> and and you guys just kind of just didn't get along. Period. Um, but I don't think you guys argued that much. But there were definitely times when you guys would definitely yell at each other, and it was six fifteen in the morning, and I was like, "Oh my God, it is six fifteen in the morning. What are you guys doing?" <laughs> yeah, we're just yelling. Motherly. That's all. We're yelling. What? She would be motherly to you. That that too. That yeah. too. Uh, because but... you complain about your ailments then, as you do now. Yeah. Yeah. And and she would be motherly to you and tell you to quit complaining. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, it was. It, I mean, there was a certain rough part. I mean, we talk about it next week. I think. I don't know if we talked about it this week because I wasn't listening to it as I was playing it. 
uh, where we talk about a certain um, um, drug problem she had mm. uh, at the time. And yeah. sometimes that would get me irritated because as I describe it, it was like driving down the road with a drunk person in the driver's, in the, in the passenger seat, pull, tugging on the uh, steering wheel, yeah. you know? And then I had to keep guiding the thing down the street and she was kind of tugging it. But, you know, I forgave all that because she was worth it, you know? Well, she was absolutely worth it, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And that isn't to say that I didn't have my, that I didn't do a lot of drugs, but people didn't know it because I didn't do that much, you know? So, but uh, those, were, those were good times. And then we had uh, Chuck Farnham on yesterday. So pretty soon we're going to have the whole show back together again. <laughs> and, All you need is engineers to run your board and you'll be fine. That's right. Christy, Christy Frazier, she was, she was, yeah. Yeah, well, Christy is she around. I mean, she's here on the Christy East Coast. Uh, but I, uh, I haven't heard from her in a while. I mean, I, I get a hold of her every now and then, and she kind of writes back, says hi. But she's living up in, I think, up not maybe not Vermont, but uh, what's the other state up there? New Hampshire. No, maybe New Hampshire. Maybe I can't remember Maine, where exactly. Maine, but Maine I think. And uh, she and her husband are living up there. And I, but I don't hear from her that often. We used to hear a lot more from them when they would drop into town, but we didn't hear them this time. So. And Alex, do you remember Lisa Carr? Yeah. Well, Lisa Carr has been writing on here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. She's posting on there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, She's still on KMBR when I drive up to Lodi, I hear her traffic. Yeah, well, I would like to, I would love to talk to her, too. I mean, uh, if you get a chance, Lisa, let me know how we get a hold of you, okay? <laughs> and, and, and boy, I, I have to say that when I was, when I was 17, mm -hmm. um, boy, I was in love with Lisa Carr's voice. Boy, she, she just had the greatest voice. I was did. like, oh, great man, voice. great set who's, who's this Lisa Carr? Oh, my God. <laughs> I think she was like 94.9 also, like a couple of those stations. And well, well, there, th there was a thing called uh, 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 Metro Traffic, mm -hmm. and she worked for Metro Traffic. She didn't work for Live 105. Yeah. Right. I mean, you had Sal Castaneda for a time, right? Yes. And they oh, yeah. all of them did more than one station, <laughs> you know. Um, but they may, I, I don't know if they use different names on every station, though, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, it was a while before I realized that her name was simply a traffic name. Yeah. Lisa <laughs> Carr. Yeah. Uh, I oh. think. I mean, I've never I never asked her, is that your real name? But I don't think so. Yes. Wasn't, wasn't there a news uh, a traffic reporter that was also a comedian? Jane Dornacker or something like that. Well, Jane Dornacker was a comedian who came to New York and was the traffic person on the Howard Stern show. Yeah. And one okay. day she was up in a helicopter reporting the news, the report, because she had they had a traffic helicopter. Yeah. It was on uh, K uh, WNBC, and it crashed in the uh, in the Hudson, and she died. So that's yeah. what happened to Jane Dornacker. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I remember her yeah. as a comedian and a traffic. I didn't realize she did traffic in New York. I thought it was here. No, she didn't do it here. She did oh, that's it okay. elsewhere. Yeah, she did it in New yeah. York. All right. Well, that's that's a shame. Yeah. I like to say Howard Stern killed her. <laughs> <laughs> you know. There's no lost love between you and Howard Stern, that's for sure. Well, no. I, you know, Howard and I have... We, we kind of Wait, what, are on good was terms. There, was there love in the first place? I mean... No, there was never love in the first place. But Right, so there's no lost love. Yeah, definitely. But we did we did kind of come to a accommodation, let's say. But he's yet to apologize for saying I stole his act, my act from him. Never going to happen. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but, but, you know, the problem with that is when somebody says you stole something from them, like you stole their bit, Okay, and he is more popular than you are. He's got a national audience, and you've got a local audience. Uh, it's pretty hard to get over that, you know, because people then listen to me and go, "Oh, you, you, where'd you get your act from, Howard Stern?" You know, I go, "No." Well, Howard said you did. You know, so, eh, well, I don't care. You know, I've had a good enough life without being uh, involved with Howard Stern. Never uh, listened to a single episode, so 
Yeah, I've you know I've people ask me about Howard Stern, and I say you're not going to believe this, but I think I've heard him for five minutes in my entire life. You know, I probably see more of him by accidentally bumping into him on YouTube than I ever did on the radio. I hear more of him as cameos in movies than anywhere else. Yeah. You know, I, I, he, he did a cameo in a movie where it was like, it was his voice mm -hmm. on the radio mm -hmm. coming through. Um, I think that's the most I've ever heard of him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Damien, that was Alex's voice that was on that cameo. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that movie, different movie. <laughs> <laughs> my my voice was on uh, in the uh, first uh, George Groundhog Clooney movie. Day, wasn't it? What? No. Ground? No, no. It was in. That uh, wasn't you. Okay. No, that was. Uh, but my, I was in. Uh, uh, was what it was, a Lucas what was thing? That, what was the name of the picture? No, it was the first picture that George Clooney did. Oh. First feature he did. Uh, One fine day. Oh. And uh, the, at the beginning, uh, he wakes up in the morning and his radio clock radio goes off, and, and guess who's on? And Lori's in there too, laughing a little bit, you know, talking with me. And how much do you think we got paid for that? Three hundred dollars. You, you got it right. You got it right. He got it right. Every, Brian scale. Neary. Yeah, everybody wants me for nothing. Yeah. I mean, today, uh, today I wound up and I and I, I substituted for somebody over at a radio station here in New York. And there was never a conversation about how much money I was going to get. You know, just could you do this for us? Uh, sure, why not? Cost well, you me did it for the exposure. Cost me fifty bucks to get down there, but you know, <laughs> who listened to that show today? Bill, who had nothing else better to do. No, I made an effort to 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 listen to it, and I want to tell you something. Alex killed it. If you like what he used to do in the eighties, Alex was back, and he was back solid. And, uh, you know, I hope that you can listen to this show, his show, uh, it may be uh, recorded or something because Alex Bennett killed it. Well, I, I just put it up. I just put it up. On. On, I just put it up on my Facebook page. OK, you oh. were on and uh, I'm very happy for you. You need to turn your mic down a little bit, Phil. Yeah, but it, okay. it was. Um, yeah, uh, it was a, a strange thing because let me explain it to you. Uh, this station I was on is called 970 The Answer, 970 yeah. AM The Answer. Uh, and what it is, is it's owned by Salem Corporation, which <laughs> is a religious broadcaster. So I was on a Christian radio station. That's, Alex got religion. That, Alex wait, a minute, wait a minute, that's right wing. <laughs> of course. And I and when I, they first approached me on this, I said to them, you, you do know that I'm Jewish and to the left, right? And they said, we don't care. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I figured maybe I was just their last chance. I don't know what it was. But anyway, so I did this hour. I did this hour down there. Who set it up? Hmm? Uh, did anybody, you know, set it up? A uh, guy over at uh, WABC, uh, Frank Morano, I think is his name. And he uh, well, who was Matt? Uh, Matt was a, Matt's the board op. Oh yeah, yeah. But they're used to talking with the host a lot. You yeah, know. you you worked really well together with him. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it 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 went by fast. I was worried I didn't have enough to take care of an hour. You know, uh, but I uh, loved they give you a subject or the interview no, or no, no, no. I was hosting the show. Yeah, I was okay. doing the show. You know. Um, and uh, of course, I had to, you know, say vow my my allegiance to Jesus Christ and to Donald <laughs> Trump. But outside of that, you know, it was an easy hour. Um, but it, it was, uh, you know, it was. Uh, it, it's strange because I was in the studio, the same studio that I did an hours, uh, three hour show on W O R from. Those were the old W the not the old W O R studios. I had also worked those. In fact, I have worked three iterations of the WOR studios here in New York without really being on WOR very much. Um, but this was the same studio I'd done that out of. When they left, this group took over the studios. And so right next door to this studio was another radio station they own, WMCA. 
which was the first radio station I ever worked in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it was kind of like, I, I said, I, I've gone for a full circle. I can die tomorrow and everything will have been done that had to be done. You should have wore your good guy sweatshirt into the WMC. You know, I should have done that. I should have done, you're right, I have one. Yeah. Yeah, Alex, I got, I got to hop off here. Okay. So, um, okay, man, thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Good seeing you. Oh, you should, yeah, uh, was... uh, you should plug your show, Damien. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Uh, listen to the exchange uh, every Monday at nine thirty Eastern, seven thirty, is it six thirty Pacific? Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, check it out. Yeah. The exchange. It's on this channel. Yeah, what it is. It is. And, 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 and it's on demand if you want to hear it now. And it's a good yeah. show. It's also, a good you can show. find it anywhere you find fine podcasts. Yes, but I, it's a what, good show. It's a very what's good show. What's it about? Show. It's about um, an hour. Listen. It's about an hour. About an hour. <laughs> 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 yes, it's, it's about an hour. How would you do about how, things how, that how, I'm interested in, mostly technology mm -hmm. and pop culture. And then if Star Trek is running, you, I, I spend a lot of time on Star Trek. Yeah, you're, you're the Star Trek guy. <laughs> yeah. Really. But um, yes, we are not a Star Trek podcast. Yeah. What do you think of Picard? Um, well, I don't. You, uh, Episode seven pissed me off like crazy, and then episode eight made me. No, it was nine um, pissed me off, and then ten was okay. Yeah. You know, so all over, I give it a a seven point five out of ten. Okay, yeah, you know, that's fine. It was definitely enjoyable. Um, there was a ton of fan service and um, a lot of things that I did not understand. And if you know, if they were going to do fan service. You know, write it properly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. I, I, I'll never it, forget. I got to tell you a quick story. I'll never forget the time I had uh, Patrick Stewart on my show here in New York on Sirius XM. And he came in and we had a very nice interview. Spent about 20, 25 minutes with him. And then we went to a break and I said goodbye to him. And I said, whenever you're back here, please come see us again. He says, well, if I ever wind up doing another movie. Like, <laughs> he, he was like any actor, he felt that that job was his last. Mm -hmm. You know? And I always liked that about him because I went, okay, Insecure, he's my guy. You know? Well, also, you know, I mean, we have prestige TV these days, and so doing, doing these 10-episode runs is kind of like doing a new movie. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 So maybe you can get him on again. He did say he would come back. <laughs> yeah, well, now it's a question of if I live long enough. <laughs> you, know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, he's going to beat you. I mean, come on. <laughs> probably. the right, he's, he's, doing, he's doing okay, you know. Well, so, yeah, I mean, reach out and see if, I mean, he lives in California. Yeah, so, you know. Well, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, I got to run. Talk to good you later. Good y'all. Always good talking Bye, to you, Damien. Bye-bye. Catch you later. There he goes. Here he goes. Damien Chaplin, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mondays right here. Uh, so anyway, I'm glad you liked the show today. He was the only one that listened. Uh, oh, so, no, I, I listened. Oh, I no, I, I, I loved it. Oh, you mean, it was very oh today? Oh, you, you listened to that today. Yeah, yeah, of course. You thought Got it was okay, part. too, huh? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember her, too. No, yeah. no, oh, no, 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 not the Lori show. Uh, the, the, oh, uh, the radio show in yeah. New York that Alex. Oh had. no 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 sorry. Oh, uh, let me thing. tell you, Alex was so sharp. He didn't miss a beat. He was so clear. His thoughts were clear. He he was just his timing was perfect. Uh, if you want to remember uh, the Alex of old, this is this is the real Alex, and you can hear what him. Did you, what did you expect? You know, it was yeah, funny. He, Phil wasn't there, so everything went smooth. No, it's very nice of Phil to say. Nobody interrupted him. <laughs> very nice of Phil to say that. I, you know, I got to tell you something. I, uh, and if you look at it, we did a little thing in the subway, Marjorie and I, on the way home. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And I looked at it and I said, I look more refreshed yeah. on that video than I've looked on any video we've done. And I said, there was something about working in a radio studio again that invigorated me, you know. So you told a story once about Bob Hope. Yeah, uh, 
and he was sort of doddering. And as soon as they mentioned his name and he came out to get on stage, he became Bob Hope. Yeah. yeah. So were you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it has not, it, it isn't really so much that it was just that I walked out of there and I felt invigorated. Yeah. You know, which is terrific. You know, can't do better than that. You know, no so. king will do you that should to you. feel invigorated. You were you killed it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's nice to know. You know, <clears throat> that you liked it and that you were uh, enjoying it. Oh, look who's there. It's Adrian. Mm -hmm. She's going to be an old lady now. Do you notice that? She's got gray hair. Poor thing. <laughs> gray hair. You know. I think it's blonde. Hello. <laughs> Say hello. Say goodbye. Hi. Isn't that the Tulsi Hi. Gabbard uh, look? Y yeah. She, you know what she is? Uh, Don't insult her. No, yeah, I like Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. You know, actually, Adrian has grown up on this show. Yeah. I mean, that's what's so fascinating. When was the first time she appeared? Do you remember? Well, I first I was first on just when COVID hit. Okay. And she was how old then? So she was five? was that three years ago? Yeah, yeah, she was about five. Yeah. Yeah. Four or five. Mm -hmm. and it's just yeah. been fun to watch her grow up. You know? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what you'd like her to stay the little girl for the rest of her life? No. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go shower. Go. Yes. Okay. We have to have adult talk. So you need to get out of here. I am an adult. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're an adult minus so many years. Yeah. Uh, she's terrific. She's the best. You're very lucky, Brian. You know. Oh, I better not say that while she's around. You won't be saying that when she's 16. Bye <laughs> <laughs> bye. Yeah, that's the awful year. Thirteen. Thirteen's the awful year. Yeah. Are those the, you know, uh, Phil. You know, Phil. Brian will be calling us about that time to get his training. Yeah, but they talk about they talk about the terrible twos. Yeah. Yeah, that's for real. Yes. Like, it is. Two years old, almost like on her birthday. All of a sudden, she started crying about everything. Yeah. Really, right now, almost on the birthday. Yeah. And then how long? How long did the terrible twos last? One year. Uh, I don't know. I'll let you know when they're over. <laughs> At least two years. Come on. Did, did yeah, there, a couple teeth... years. Yeah, it was really bad. Just. <laughs> I... Did their teeth start coming in when they're two, or? Yeah, but yeah, probably. Hey, I mean, you've had kids. You should know. I don't remember. My my youngest is thirty on May tenth, and her teeth are still coming in. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, yeah. My youngest is thirty, and my oldest is thirty-two. Oh, okay. So, do you talk to them often? Uh, the older one I do, uh, not often, but uh, she's very busy, kind of has a job that keeps her busy. And the younger one is living in Canada. She doesn't talk to anybody, and me or her mother. You know? Yeah. Well, I, th th that might change as the years go on. You know? I hope so. Yeah, as people get older, they, you know, there's a whole different. You remember, remember what you were like at 30? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I call my mother once every six months. And, you know. Yeah, and, well, I mean, it was like when my mother would call. It's, oh, it's my mother. Right. You know. <laughs> and now that they're gone, you miss them, you know. Yeah. No, I don't miss her. <laughs> well, she, she, listen, she lived to be 100. How can I miss her if she wouldn't go away? <laughs> you know? And when she finally died, I went, you know, good. There's now some parking spaces available. You know? I mean, she was, you know. I love my father was the one I grieved about because yeah. he was he was 59 when he died. Yeah. And I just adored my father. Were you? What? How old were you? When I died? No, when oh. your dad died. How old well, was I? I was in the I was was I in the Navy? Yes, I think I was in the Navy. Uh, maybe I can't remember. I so you were over 18. Oh, yeah. I was in my mid 20s, maybe. Yeah, I, yeah. I felt ripped off. My I was seventeen when my father died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, it just bothered me because he was only fifty nine. I could have had him a lot yeah. longer. Then yeah. I adored my father. I mean, I had nothing but a. I thought he was terrific. My mother, yeah. I always thought was kind of dumb. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I loved her. She wasn't mean or evil. She was a little selfish. She'd always talk about what people had done for her. You know, and they're, they're, the basis of how they how good they were was whether whether they'd done stuff for her. So, you uh -huh. know, 
kind of like Alan. Yeah. You know, so it's. Uh, yeah, Alan's generous. He's just. Yeah, I mean, he's just mean. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I mentioned on the show today that uh, we lost uh, Jerry Springer. Yeah, yeah I saw which, that. Which oh, I, I, I felt that. bad oh. about because uh, you know I I knew him a bit. He'd done my show maybe twice, three times, something like that. One time in my bedroom in San Francisco. Oh. Uh, we did a show from my bedroom. And oh. he was a guest. You have to show. fight the other host with uh, boxing gloves or no, uh, rip no. their uh, extent, hair extensions off? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. They, they were fighting over the KY tube. No, we had a pillow fight, I think. Uh, but, but anyway, so, I mean, uh, he, I always liked him. I just always liked him. He's a very decent guy who, among other I things... I the show on Air America. Well, uh, yeah, who didn't, who, who, by the way, who didn't take himself seriously. Never. In fact, I'd have him on, I'd go, you know, so what about the TV show and stuff? I said, you know, I knew him. I said, you know, you were the mayor of Cincinnati. Uh, you're a political lefty, so I love that. I said, and you're really, he was, he was more to the left than I am, okay? Did you know somebody that was a producer on his show? Huh? Or was, were you friends with a producer no, from his show? No, no. But anyway, he, uh, uh, and I, I said to him, so, I, you know, with all that, how can you do that show? And he says, hey, it's just a dumb show. It makes me money. Money? You know? He said, it's a dumb show. Anybody ask me, I tell them, it's a dumb little show. You know? And, and it was. And that was maybe the great joy of it, is because it had no guilt about what it was. You know? And, and he just kept having fun with it all these years. But he died uh, today of pancreatic cancer. Wow. Just told a couple of months ago. He was 79. Oh, God. That's too yeah. bad. You know, and I lost Ronnie about that age uh, with pancreatic cancer. So apparently, there's a late blooming pancreatic cancer that can happen. But and uh, I mean, bad one. Uh, they still don't know what causes it exactly. So. Well, it's the pancreas going bad and getting cancer. That's what I've heard. I mean, I don't know if that's. Yeah, it sounds logical to me. Yeah, but I'm no doctor, but I, I'm going to just hazard that guess. It, neither am I. So there we go. Yeah. Uh, that's for sure. I just play. I just play one. Well, what they're trying to do with pro uh, pancreatic cancer is they're trying to find <clears throat> tests that will show you if you got it well beforehand. Yeah. Because yeah, the if, if they I, if they can do that, they can yeah. save a lot of lives. Because this is something that by the time it even takes has any kind of an effect on the person, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. it's spread. It's stage four cancer. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and Ronnie, they did a thing called the what was the what was it called? The, the it had a name. It was a special operation. Yeah, yeah. In which they just rip your organs to shreds, yeah. but they rearrange them and they get it out of there. And she got rid of the prostate cancer, but then I think it spread to other places. So, you know. First woman we ever knew that had a prostate. <laughs> no, it was pancreatic. Pancreatic. Said prostate. We knew what you Did meant. I say prostate? Yeah, yeah. you did. You did yeah. Prostate on your mind. Boy. And I said to Ronnie, uh, I said to uh, Ronnie, I said to uh, 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 Lori that I we were in... Uh, Alberville, but it was Lillehammer. I had it mixed up, you know. Yeah. But hey, it was both the Winter Olympics. I was close. Olympic. Yeah, it was close. It's in the ballpark. Yeah. yeah, I'm in the ballpark. You know. When you watch the show Lillehammer, did uh, oh. any of the places that uh, they set up for that for that series uh, did you recognize from your? Yeah, you know, it's kind of not really because a lot of that show was not really in the dead of winter. You know, and I, I only recognize the main street if it's under, you know, foot of snow, you know. Yeah. Uh, but um, um, I watched the show, though, because Little Hammer's a great little town. I mean, it's a wonderful yeah. town. Uh, and uh, I, I enjoyed the Little Hammer Olympics, except for the Coca-Cola police, you know. Yeah. The Steve Zan Van Zant version, I really enjoyed. Uh, I've never been to uh, Little Hammer or... Uh, any of those? Uh, is it Steve uh, Van Zandt? Is that his first name, Steve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, Steve oh, little Steven, Zandt. little Steven, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean he he was that was a good show. Yeah, but he did yeah, that right. as a offshoot from The Sopranos because he's basically playing the same character. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Except on the lamb. On the run. Or, or not on the run. He's being hidden by... Uh, and witness protection or someone. That was, Anybody see the show Beef? Yes. Yeah. It's in my watch list, yeah. I, I yeah. liked it. No, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, I, 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 about road rage? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not yeah. interested in road rage. Started that way. No, I love road rage. I, love, I won't spoil I, it. I love though. inciting road rage in other people. That's my great <laughs> pastime. We yeah. have it all the time in Texas. People get shot every day on the road. Well, that's because anybody uh, can have a gun. Yeah. They have gun racks still in those trucks? Hell yeah. Really? They got more than I one gun in them now. You want to hear the stupidest law I ever heard was in Texas. The law was it was illegal to carry a firearm in your car unless you were transporting it from one place to another. <laughs> they well, honestly, the officer, call. the reason I have these 10 uh, 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 guns hmm. in my car is I'm just taking them home. Okay, <laughs> get on with yourself, you know. Well, they fixed that law. Yeah, Did no they? Six-year-olds can have guns now in Texas. Yeah, right. <laughs> Anybody can get them. Hey, and I think that's as it should be, right? Tony can't get one. Really? Why? Now today, the other big, the, the other big, big piece of news is that Mike Pence testified uh, before what the uh, January sixth oh, committee. Finally? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what he did? He didn't want to do it. Okay. Well, he didn't want to look like he was doing it. So he said, I'm not going to do it unless they subpoena me, in which case I have no other choice. So they subpoenaed him, so he did it, saying, hey, I, I, by law, I have to do it, and I'm a law-abiding citizen. So I, heard, not, yeah. I heard a thing from an AP reporter that said, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think he was in the room, but he said that... Uh, Basically, Mike Pence, t- his testimony was what was in his book. And so it was in the book. That's what that's what his testimony was. Yeah. But he couldn't read the book. Uh, I wasn't going to spend. Uh, you know, what I, mean? I don't think that he, in the library. <laughs> no, to have him testify is probably worth more than having the book and saying, well, it's in the book. You well, know. Yeah. But this AP reporter, uh, I don't know that. He was in the room. That wasn't something that he said, but he said his testimony coincided with what was in his book. Yeah. Yeah, I heard one, yeah, I heard one thing, and they kept referring to the book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, they probably want to hear from the horse's mouth, and so they got it from the horse's mouth. Uh, wait a minute. They couldn't have gotten it from the horse's mouth. Pence didn't bring his wife along. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Um. Yeah, here she comes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mrs. Ed. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, anyway, so you know, I mean, uh, it's um, strange times we live in, you know. Strange times. Why is still alive? That landed on his head during the debates. Well, oh yeah, remember that. (laughs) Well, he didn't swat it away. That was the thing that everybody was amazed by. Yeah, he just sat there. I don't think he knew it was there. Oh, what what is that? Is that your Trump pen? Oh, yeah. Here we go again, (laughs) playing those stupid songs. Are the songs on there? I forget. Can you push Uh, No, it's all close. What? (laughs) What? I didn't hear it. Good. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah, right. right. They they had a meme saying about the the whole Fox... uh, Payment mm-hmm. for Dominion, mm-hmm. and they said that that uh, Mexico is going to pay for it. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering <laughs> if the reason they fired Tucker Carlson was because he exposed uh, all of those January 6th tapes. No, uh, no, no. Uh, you know, the hours of January 6th. I now, think I, I think that... Fox would find that actually a positive for him that he he got them. You know, well, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people trying to destroy. I'm going to tell you why I think. He got fired. Okay, yeah. he was a. I think as a person, he was a pain in the ass to them. You know, demanding and oh, yeah. and and you know, telling him you can't do this and I won't do that and so on and so forth. And he could do it because he was the eight hundred pound gorilla, right? He was he making twenty million dollars a year. No, he wasn't. Eight million. That's, really? I, that's what I read. Eight million. I've got a list here of all the people and how much money they make. 
eight million. He made he made Jewish. one third of what Hannity makes. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, I but Hannity's Hannity. been there twenty years. Okay, his audience wasn't that much smaller than Bill O'Reilly's after a year or two. Uh, Bill O'Reilly said that uh, he had four million uh, listeners to his main show, and that uh, Hannity and not Hannity that. Uh, Carl started with 2.8 and then uh, brought it up to over three. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever. I think I'll tell you the reason I think he's gone. And it's a very simple reason. He was probably, A, a pain in the ass, which isn't enough for them to get rid of him because, hey, if he's getting ratings and those ratings are making him money, then okay. But it turned out that no advertisers wanted to advertise with Tucker Carlson. So consequently, if he couldn't make money for the company, Bye bye. See you later. How major advertisers do they have? They have that uh, fruits and vegetable capsule. They got the pillow guy. Uh, and they've got uh, uh, some university, uh, 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 right wing university. They don't have a lot of uh, major advertisers. You don't see any of the airlines. You don't. You don't see any major advertisers on Fox News. Um, well, they're, they're all I secondary. Think... <clears throat> Stuff. I mean, I could advertise my store there and I'd probably afford the rate. I think mm -hmm. that he, uh, they, they make, um, you know, that, 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 that they didn't, were not making money with Tucker Carlson. So that, and, and in combination with the fact that they were getting all this heat about what he was saying, okay, just made them say, we don't need him. We really don't need him. Uh, so the ratings go down. So we'll get some advertisers back anyway. You know, so we'll fill that time with with the advertisers that canceled already. Uh, you know, it's all part of trying to save their ass, basically. But he wasn't that valuable to him because you're only as valuable as much as in as much money as you can make for the company. That's it. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. You don't make money for the company. You're out of there. You know, so. Um, so uh, anyway. Um, did uh, uh, what? Do you would you agree with me, Kevin? That's a good reason why he probably is out of there. I mean, everybody, pretty, everybody's asking why. What? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, that's usually the reason. Yeah. He said yeah. there was also emails, uh, but I don't know what's true and what's not true. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, uh, and there was some uh, uh, thing where a producer. Uh, I think said that uh, he created a, a bad. Oh no! This is the woman that's that's suing Fox yeah. Yeah. Uh, for asking her to shut up, you know, and and to play the game, and she didn't want to, and well, also because be he was uh, uh, creating a hostile work environment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that, that suit was sitting by, and they I think they didn't want to have to defend themselves in that one. So by getting rid of Tucker Carlson. They could say, "Well, we did something about it." You know? Yeah, but that doesn't get rid of the suit. I mean, she could still go. She can still sue, allowing yeah. that yeah. Uh, environment to exist. Yeah, but uh, uh, it was supposedly a hostile work environment. They, she claims he was anti-Semitic. He made anti-Semitic remarks a lot. Mm. You know, other hosts that knew him say that that's not the case. But yeah, and they didn't have to. Like Bongino was fired also and uh, Bongino was fired I think for entirely different reasons um, I'm not sure why probably I didn't have ratings know. probably didn't have ratings you know I mean it, it all boils down to money yeah. if if Tucker Carlson were saying what he said and he was still making a crap load of money for them he'd still be there today well, Bill O'Reilly made uh, a lot of money for them, and they still got rid of him. Yes, but he was involved in a lot of lawsuits uh, about his sexual advances towards women. And that was a hard thing for them to kind of defend unless they got rid of him. They could say, yeah. we, took, we got rid of that hostile environment. You know, you know what's funny about that with O'Reilly? They get rid of O'Reilly by Rupert Murdoch. Had the uh, sexual things going against him himself. He didn't have until, any. No, he didn't have any sexual. Was, was it Roger Ailes? Was it Roger one of the, Ailes? Yeah. Yeah, the, the other head honcho. Well, they made, they got rid of him too. Yeah, and you know what it seems like too, though. What I find funny, I was going to ask you, is that they, sometimes say like Tucker, for instance. How long of a shelf life do they really have these hosts anyway? After a while, don't they have? Obviously, to get rid of in the case of Hannity, twenty years. 
I was like, don't you think they should get rid of him after I turn it over? Like, well, he's still making the money. He's st know, that's the bottom line. I mean, you don't you know, have anybody that tries to put any other uh, motive to this on the part of the company. It's always about the money. It's always about the ratings. I mean, hell, when did they try to get rid of me in San Francisco? When did I have to go to Florida? When the ratings went down, meant less money coming in. And I was a little bit of a pain in the ass to work with, too. Mm -hmm. you oh, know? he wasn't even when it you were here. Yeah. Although the guy who fired me, Ed Graff, yeah. is still a friend of mine to this day. Oh, yes, you nice. know, well, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, but, uh, and, and then I came back and the ratings went right back up so they could make lots of money again. And then they started to slowly dwindle again. And eventually it was, oh, well, we're going to try uh, somebody else in here. You know, it was really what they were trying to do was they got rid of me. Then they put somebody in. They had no intention of keeping Howard. there. And you know to make Stern. the coast clear for Howard Stern, because CBS bought Live Is 105. Is that the guy that was represented by your representative? No, uh, the, the, uh, no you mean the guy who, who got my job? Yeah. Yeah, the comedian. What's his name? Johnny yeah. Steele. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I come to find out. That when I'm, we're negotiating my leaving, okay, yeah. um, and when I was going to leave and how much uh, I was going to get paid, which was a year's worth of, of pay, mm -hmm. uh, which was not insufficient, in, 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 un, insignificant. insignificant because, you know, it's a lot of money. Uh, uh, while we were negotiating that, I come to find out that my uh, agent, Representing the guy who's supposed to replace me. What did he tell you? Well, we, we we called him up. And we said, "Are you representing Johnny Steele?" And he said, "Yeah." He said, "You know that's against the law, don't you? Mm -hmm. You're putting yourself in a very bad position." So he got rid of he, he he dropped Johnny Steele as his client, but gave it to a friend of his, oh. who after I left and the coast was clear, gave him back Johnny Steele as a client. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, but that happens in Hollywood. Who did that happen? That happened to Gary Shandling. Really? It did yeah, I told that. Marjorie when we were watching this thing about Gary Shandling, he had an agent. I'm trying to remember his name right now. Uh, I'll, I'll remember it in a couple. I'll, I'll remember it as soon as we get off the air here. Like and and guy. and it uh, 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 was Br Brillstein Gray. Yeah, Brad Gray. Brad Gray. Okay. Uh, and it, what happened with Brad Gray was. Uh, exactly that, you know, that he was representing somebody else who was maybe going to replace Shandling. So it was just like it was a big cluster deal. And um, uh, so this happens a lot in the business, and you can, but you're not allowed to do it. You're not allowed to represent somebody and then to represent that person's replacement. Because, you know, you're not going to work very hard at trying to keep me my job. I was going to say, how are you working for me when you're getting him a job? It's like, what's going on? The only on guy here? that's winning in this whole deal is the, the, is the agent. Yeah. Yeah. Did the agent get his percentage on your uh, severance pay? You know, the, the, no, I don't think so, no. 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 Uh, can I ask you a question? When they give you a year salary, were you able to work someplace else? Or did you have to take it? Like, Well, here's how, that, here's how that works. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and we, uh, Lori and I was talking about it. You know, it's very nice to get paid four hundred thousand dollars for a year not to work. Let's go by Alex's for breakfast. Not to work, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it isn't a great thing because what you have to realize it's worth four hundred thousand dollars to them for you not to be there. You know, that's, yeah, right. wanna, I mean, that's the price of getting out of having to see you. Uh, right. If you took a job at another station, okay. So let me explain and, that. And, uh, and let's say you I was going to explain for a dollar. I was going to explain that. I was going to oh, explain okay. that. What happens is I could take another job because what they were doing is they were paying out the rest of my contract. Mm -hmm. But if I took a job that say was equal in in, mm -hmm. in money to the money they were paying me, then they wouldn't owe me anything. Oh, that sucks. If, wait a minute. If I yeah. took less from the new employer, take less, Alex, yeah. they have to pay the difference. Can oh, you imagine if you took a job for a dollar 
and you were on a competing station, and they had to pay you the four hundred grand. The other that's guy gets you for a buck. Yeah, but it's not worth my time for a dollar. Yeah, we, to we, go no, it is, but you get in the four hundred grand. It's worth it to be able to say screw you. Well, it yeah. is kind of nice to have somebody else have to, you yeah. know, have them pay for me. Well, that happened to me. You know, that happened to me when I went to the to the live one hundred and five uh, in San Francisco. Um, I was uh, I was at the Quake. And then they got sold, and one thing led to another. They were trying to force me out of there. So finally, they just started paying me not to work. And so a guy by the name of Ed Cramp, who was running Live 105, felt he wanted to have me on in the morning. So he went to them and said, look, I'll make you a deal. One of these, was one of these football kind of deals, you know. Uh, we will, um, we will um, pay half and you pay half. You know, and they mm. said, "Well, no, we want you to pay sixty percent. We'll take forty percent." He said, "Okay, and we'll do that until Alex equals the amount that he was making, the ratings he got for us, mm. and then uh, you owe nothing." And they said, "Well, no, we don't want that deal because he's never going to be able to get those ratings again, and we we don't want to have to. We we'd rather keep paying the forty percent." Then take a chance and a bet that we're not going to have to pay anything, you know. Yeah. So that was the deal they took. First yeah. rating book that came out, I beat my ratings. Ooh. That were at at live at at the quake, and you they had, had to keep about. paying the forty oh, percent for a year. Yeah. For a year. You yeah. should have sent them a telegram. Look what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean. They, they, they must have shit because they could have gotten out of that so easily. You know, they would have been free and clear. But it was it was Cramp's uh, love of football that made him make that kind of deal, you know. So that's how I wound up going to Live 105, you know, which at that time was in the furniture mark, which today is? Twitter. That's right. Really? Yeah. I had an office in the furniture mart uh, yeah. back oh, in the 70s. It was uh, on the seventh floor. And then I had one on the second floor where the switchboard was. Yeah, well, we were on this bottom floor uh, over on the side where the yeah. pigeons pooped into the, into the offices. Yeah, that used to yes. be called Design Mart. Yeah. And uh, I knew the guy that yeah. had the furniture thing right. in, in, that, in that spot. Brian's got his hand up. Brian? And you know what your buddy Elon Musk did the Twitter sign, right? So the Are Twitter sign? It? What did he do? He sell it? So you know, you know his whole S E X Y. You know, for all the models, right? For yeah. the cars. Well, for his he had the Model X, the Model yeah. E, the and Model the three, X, and, yeah. S and three, which is backwards E. So Twitter and over here, he took he they blacked out the W. So it says titter. <laughs> Didn't the landlord they, say the, you couldn't the do landlord it? said you cannot do that? So he lightly lightly drew that in so you could so it's you know it's a dark color and they really light gray or something is the w but it looks like it says titter why did he do that because he says because why did he do sexy <laughs> same thing he, oh he's on know, what's he, call it? he's on bill moore this week i think yeah i think so yeah yeah well, they yeah. grounded uh spacex uh i guess over the uh the, the sh uh, spaceship that they had a yeah. blow up yeah, well, it, it it just the trouble was the shri the debris fell on everything else. Uh, well, they said that it didn't hit anything and it didn't hurt anybody, but the, the debris. But the uh, the thing is, he was grounded indefinitely. Uh, I don't understand why. Well, that's Ooh. indefinite, but the, he'll yeah. get that lifted. Well, yeah. typically they ground him until they decide what happened, and then uh, they'll let him go. They want to have an investigation. Yeah, but as soon as they solve that. He'll be yeah. back up and running because NASA needs him. Those rockets are going to take the supposedly take up to the moon. Yeah, unless they use a stu those stupid old shuttle rockets again. They just should have used Jackie Gleason. To the yeah. moon. Do you agree with that, uh, 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 Charlie? The using no. of those those NASA rockets that were used on the shuttle to get the current rocket up. Oh, are they going to do that? Well, that's what they did when they sent. Remember, they sent the, the first rocket. Yeah, they had up? like thirty rocket things on the side of that. Yeah, but it went around the moon, right? But the thing that lifted it off the ground were the old shuttle. Yeah. Uh, rockets. Just, yeah. You know, yeah, which they, they would ride on the back of the shuttle. 
which yeah. compared to the one that Musk's uh, SpaceX is doing are very inefficient and too expensive to operate. Well, I didn't know. And his come back to the ground. Huh? Y yes, he, they do come back to the ground. I mean, uh, but um, you know, so I mean, anyway, I, I that I, we used to work in the in the furniture mart, and uh, I, I remember that office when I first went into that studio. It was just this, it's this cramped little nothing of a place, and I had given up working at fairly decent sized radio stations, and I'm going into this what essentially was a toilet. Okay. Uh, I'm surprised there wasn't a sink in the studio. Yeah. So I, uh, uh, well, I, 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 mean, I went down to see the station <laughs> one day to see what it was like before I went to work at it, not to approve it, but before I went to work there. And I immediately called my business manager. I said, can you get me out of this contract? This place <laughs> is a dump. And I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad. Hey, Camel, you didn't have a view of the bay. It was in a beautiful place. You, all you saw was the parking lot. No, we saw, we saw, we saw. A, a no, the, no the windows were to the right. No, we I, we were right opposite Pier, what was it? Pier 39. 39. You could see Pier right. 39 right out our window. Uh, yeah, I, we had a parking lot parking under lot. the station, and you right. could look down at it. But when I looked out the window, I saw the bay and everything. You kidding me? Oh, could you see over that? Uh, what do you mean over? What do you mean over that? The parking lot was, was on I the think, ground. Was there we a were building on the second on the... floor. No, we were we were right along the Embarcadero, and you could yeah, look like, right out at the bay. It was. A... I was just thinking about the wall that was straight out, and all I that had. I have no idea clock. what you're talking about. All I know is one of the most beautiful views from any oh. radio station I ever worked at. Maybe, maybe it did. I, I, was it similar to this? Nose is itching. What? It was similar to the view behind me, on my green screen. Uh, <laughs> somewhat. Yeah. Only it wasn't nighttime. Yeah. Well, and it was well, over. It was, if, if it you, was when you got there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I went in the morning, it was dark. Yeah. And I, and I could see the sun coming up. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. After that, I went to the quake, which was kind of a eh, semi dump. You know, and then I went to Live 105, the major dump. But then when I came back from uh, from Florida, uh, they had gone moved the studio somewhere else. I think we were in the, maybe we went into those studios. We Did we go to those studios while I was still there? No, it was when I came back. And it, they, were, they were great studios. They built a whole, you know, a studio for me with a live studio audience area that could hold 50 people and so on. A lot of people here remember that because they probably went down. Did you ever go down there, Kevin, to the show? No, I didn't because I was always working when you were on the air. Yeah, did you ever do it, um, um, Brian? I, I went one time when Gilbert was there. When Gilbert? Yeah, Gilbert got there. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't remember which one. It was a great studio. It's a great studio, but, you know. Anyway, it's been a long day for me. I had two interviews with uh, with <laughs> Lori, and then I had a radio show to do here. It cost oh me God. cost me six work. cost you me had to work today. sixty bucks yeah. to yeah. And then I uh, did an hour and a half of this. So oh my gosh, yeah. What do you mean? Oh my gosh. Hey, I'm an old man. I should be able to take a time off. I shouldn't have to work this hard. Everybody should listen to Alex's New York uh, show. It was excellent. It's on Facebook. It's on Facebook. Yeah, well, you know, Phil, you've said it. Yeah. Hey, well, listen. I'm plugging you. it again. Th thank That's... you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for plugging it again. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, Alan. Uh, thank you to uh, Phil. And thank you for the comments. Thank you very much to uh, uh, ca the cat. What's the cat's name, by the way? Armin. Armin. Elgato. Okay, Armin, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, and uh, thank you, Brian, for bringing Armin in. Oh, oh what is that? What's that behind Armin? Oh, that hey, must be Hammer. Adrian. Oh, Armin oh great. Yeah, yeah. You just let your father get scratched. So Warriors. What? Woo. Warriors. Oh, okay. And the anyway, and, and, and thank you also to our, our good friend, uh, uh, Tony. To everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Yep. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's got a wonderful program going on with the intersection. You can be taking your calls on Skype at uh, GabNet Live. 
I'm Alex Bennett. We'll be back again tomorrow night, last show of the week. Same time, same station in life, 1030. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, of course, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.